What's up? It's me, Chelsea Lamore, and I am live in 804 Sessions with Saint Lamore. Not to be confused with Chelsea Lamore. Right, 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 right. We got. I think we got a different spelling, right? We do, so. we do. So tell me a little bit about your spelling. Now that you mentioned it, you are Saint Lamore. Tell me about the meaning of your name. Um, well, yes, yeah, Saint Lamore, L-E-M-O-O-R. And that was originally stemming from uh, the indigenous peoples and how they went by the Moors, but that's what we refer to them as now. And I kind of use my name or my stage name, Lamar, as a segue to kind of get some uh, more of us to dig into our history and kind of look a little bit further back. So, and Lamar just it sounds so smooth off the tongue, doesn't it? And it sounds classy. You know, so. It's fancy. And that's what we do. Yeah. <laughs> well, I like that your music, you're really conscious about tying in significant things with history and culture into present day. So tell me a little bit about the inspiration for that. Okay. Uh, well, the inspiration behind doing that really ultimately is I feel like before any of us as a people will be able to move forward, we have to educate ourselves. And then, so when it comes to educating ourselves, um, you know, one of the first things within that vein is educating yourself about yourself. And so I feel like there's a, a, a huge void in our particular um, community that we need to fill first before we can move forward. And that is knowing and understanding our history. Knowing and understanding your history, I did a little research, and you are from Dallas, Texas. Okay, yes, ma'am. So, how long have you been here in the 804, and what are some of the major musical influences you've had from the Texas music scene that you felt like you bought a little flavor over here to Virginia? <laughs> um, well, I've been in I've been in VA for a little little less than two years now, and I've just kind of been moving around the DMV area, gathering a lot of experience. Um, East Coast, but a lot of the influence that I brought from Texas, I would have to say, uh, one is Scarface. Um, you know, just the the Southern style, along with being able to talk about the certain subjects that he was talking about. You know, some of those were political as well. Um, he kind of helped me to kind of bridge that gap. Mm -hmm. um, and so between him and then, of course, there is people that really provided our Southern sound, like Pimp C. Um, with the horns and with the with the country twang, like I get all of that from you know those two guys, and so that's what I kind of brought the VA to kind of you know spice it up a little bit and bring a little something else up. So, you know. I hear that little slow, that deep slow yeah. voice. I'm like, okay, man. Yeah, and ever since I've been in VA, they've been saying, hey, man, like you know your music is good, man. It's just too slow, man. You need to <laughs> you know speed it up a little bit. So so we're working on that. We got all that coming. So you tell me some of your favorite Texas artists, but of course I'm from the 804, so I want to know some of your favorite Virginia artists. Oh yeah, most definitely. I mean, well, first and foremost, I'm a huge Timberland fan. Um, you know, just his his style and his production. I equate that to like a Dr. Dre on our side on the East Coast. I say um, he was a huge influence for me. Uh, Pharrell was another big influence for me, like just, uh, you know, being able to dive into the different avenues that he did and really like diversify himself and his talent, his skill, like that's something I definitely like try to model my, you know, my business plan off of being able to not just know how to rap, mm -hmm. but like know how to make beats, know how to, you know, put, put together a campaign, all of that kind of stuff, so. I know you have a new project out, so tell me a little bit about the project and the inspiration for the project as well and what you want to do with it. Oh, no, definitely. I mean, I felt like I was making a lot of statements on the last project, um, The Coldest Winter. I made a lot of statements. And so this next project, uh, entitled More Silence, was just kind of highlighting the power in silence. You know, I feel like we sometimes can do a little too much talking. And now it's time to stop the talking and get up and actually go do something. And so this whole um, new project is about doing more and saying less. Okay. It's more silence. So do my own thing, the song that you have. Well, do my own thing. Right. <laughs> do my own thing with the A. Is that from your previous project or your current project? That is actual. That was actually a single. Oh. And so the project that that single is on has not released yet. Oh, so I'm exclusive. So, so, so that yeah. So that was a little. That was actually a little uh, peek at the future. Uh, we definitely, like I say, um, in the same vein as Pharrell, we look to diversify and be able to do different things. And that song was something outside of my comfort zone, but I knew that it had a universal sound and it was something that everyone could gravitate towards. So that was, uh, you know, that was the beauty behind that record was highlighting, you know, just be creative, be yourself. You know, don't be so pressured to, um, you know, be like everybody else. Do your own thing. You know? I think that's a really powerful message right now. I think that in the social media age now, we're really pushing authenticity. Yeah and living your truth. So I really think that song is really great for the time because 
people are really searching for what their thing is. So how long have you known that music is your thing? Um, well, I, I, I started playing with music around 17, and I didn't notice, I didn't realize that it was really my thing until I was about 20. So I'm 26 now, and I'll say about about six years of solid, like, okay, this is what I'm gonna do, you know, let's 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 put this together, um, you know. And I and I would say that just take kind of take this moment because there are a lot of people that, you know, think that they or, or want to do things. It might not necessarily be, you know, for them, you know. And so. Um, you know, I would I would say like just to the people and the and the youth like you know do and try whatever it is that you want to do, but also understand that you know everything is not going to be for you. Something that is for you might not for be someone else and, or for someone else and vice versa. So as a new artist, you are you have your own line of merchandise. A lot of people don't really have their own line of merchandise, and I like the message that you're sending with your merchandise. So so kind of tell us some of the items that you have and the meaning behind them. And your logos. Oh, no, definitely. Uh, well, it all started right here. So it all started with um, L'Amour, um, finding different ways to kind of depict that. And it started with just a, a little brand image with the records as the O's. And um, that hence more records is kind of what I ran with. Now, when I came up with this image here, um, I was actually using a picture of myself. And I, I used to wear a beret a lot. Oh, okay. Back in college, and so that's where the you idea. Starting came. a revolution. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I started pretty, you know, influenced by them, but um, ultimately, I silhouette the picture out, and I realized, like, yo, this is this is almost as powerful as the black fist. Like it was giving me that vibe, and so that's when I knew that I had to put it on merchandise. I had to sell it just because this is bigger than you know music, and so I went ahead and got a couple of beanies stitched up. Um, I went and got a couple of crew necks made, and you can find all of that stuff on morerecords.com. Um, and we're looking to do, you know, many more things. We got spring coming up, and we got workout gear, all that stuff. Oh so. yes, <laughs> you are booked and busy. I saw that you performed at South by Southwest, which What's is that? in Austin, Texas. Yes, yes. Tell me what it's like to leave home and go back and receive so much love. Um, no, no, it's definitely uh, gratifying just knowing and understanding that you're jumping out on a limb here to try something, you know, that everybody isn't successful at. And so being able to come home and show what you've been doing and to still receive that same love from the people that you've known from, you know, a while now, it's definitely like, you know, it's just all love and gratifying at the end of the day. I'm gracious and thankful, you know, that people are still rocking with me this long. So, you know, giving me inspiration to keep doing what I'm doing. Awesome. So much foresight for such a young man, St. Lamore. Well, how can everyone keep up with you? Give me your website, all that good stuff, and tell them what's going on with you. Oh, definitely. Um, well, um, you can find anything, music, merchandise, all at morerecords.com. That's M-O-O-R, records with an S, dot com. Um, follow me on all social media platforms at St. Lamore, all, all spelled out. We're going to probably be in your area very soon <laughs> on the street, you know, rapping with a speaker and a microphone. Um, yeah, and you can catch us out at Something in the Water this month, April 26th through the 28th. Uh, we'll be out there. Um, you know, just promoting and giving away merchandise, music, things like that. So, see, hope to see you guys soon. Oh, you're doing it. If you need somebody in your entourage, I'll roll up to the festival with you. Thank you for stopping by 804 Sessions. It's an honor to have you. Thank you all for having me. St. Lamore. This is Chelsea Lamore signing off for 804 Sessions. Be sure to, be sure to check the website, ipowerrichmond.com, for more information.